This is a special presentation of EA Sports from the Coliseum in Oakland. Our tribute to the coach, the John Madden Legacy Game. I'm Brandon Gordon here to take you through the proceedings. And coming up, we're going to tell the story of a man who was truly larger than life and whose impact on the sport of football certainly is going to live on for decades and decades to come. Now, we've assembled a couple of rosters featuring some of Coach's favorite players from both yesterday and today. And Coach himself will be on the sidelines for both squads, trying to motivate his guys to victory. And I'm joined now by my good friend Charles Davis. CD, your thoughts on John Madden and what he meant to the sport he loved so much. For me, Brandon, it's the word joy. He brought that to the game of football, brought the game to so many people. He stayed involved his entire life. And moving forward, when you think of football, you're always going to think John Madden. Time for old times. What do you VL Mercy. Football, Welcome to the Blaze Cave. From Oakland in the John Madden Legacy game. Here comes Devin Hester bringing it out. So it's the NFC Stars who will get the ball first. And Charles, as we alluded to, we've got a different era of coach on each sideline. So the man coaching this NFC squad, we'll call him Young John Madden. This is a coach who was trying to establish a foothold in the NFL and on the cusp of doing it very successfully. Yeah, you think back to that period, those early days as the coach of the Raiders, the late 60s in the AFL and then in the NFL in the early 70s. Coach was a guy who was ahead of his time. The Raiders were one of the first teams to have mini camps, one of the first to film practice because he wanted to practice coaching as much as he could. And his teams, they were successful right from the start of his head coaching tenure. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. And some room to run now. There he goes, left side. 20. Touchdown! A great play there. 76 yards. And the NFC has taken the early lead. Well, they said they wanted to have some explosive runs. How about that one to start the game? And I would say on the defensive sideline, there's a lot to answer for. Because you spend all week saying, stop the run. I don't care who you're playing. You don't want to get run over. You don't want to get run past. And they have both over committing in the secondary. And he just went stepping past them and is still running, essentially. One play, and he hits pay dirt. Extra point by Anderson, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Following the touchdown, here's Anderson to kick it away. Here comes Hall. He's going to bring it out. 
And they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. So, Charles, as mentioned, we've got another Coach Madden over here on the AFC sideline. Of course, his Raiders, members of the AFC West. So this is a conference he battled in for his entire career. And you think about the landscape of the NFL as he was getting into the back half of his tenure. It was a golden era for coaches. You had Don Shula, Tom Landry, Chuck Knoll, Bud Grant. But it was John Madden who had the best winning percentage of them all, CD. 759, the best ever. Brandon, it's hard to believe he could be so successful in a conference with all those great teams. The Steelers won four Super Bowls. The Dolphins won two and were a mainstay in the playoffs. The Colts were tough. The Broncos came on late and went to a Super Bowl themselves. But against Hall of Fame coaches, John Madden's record, 36-16-2. That's pretty incredible. His Raiders were a factor each and every year. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. So as we mentioned at the top, well, let's take you through the life of John Madden. And you know, it's very fitting that we're here back in the Bay Area, not just because John's so associated with Raider football, but also because this was where he spent his formative years. Yeah, he grew up over Daly City with his buddy John Robinson, who will also be become an NFL head coach. And he played his high school ball at Jefferson High, eventually wound up playing tackle at the University of Oregon and later Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Played well enough that in 1958, he was a 21st round draft pick of the Philadelphia Eagles. That's right, the draft had 30 rounds then. Now a nice throw here right side, he hauls it in. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 19 yards to pick up there, move the chains. But Charles, you mentioned Coach was a 21st-round draft pick back in 1958. It was the Philadelphia Eagles who selected him. But unfortunately for John, knee problems, they just continued to dog him. He was hurt in his first training camp. Actually never saw the field as a player in the NFL. But it was still during his time with the Eagles. You and I were talking about this before going on air, that you could start to see the light bulb going on for what his career path might entail. And it went on in a big way, didn't it? Because while he was rehabbing his knee, he started to spend a lot of time breaking down film with the Eagles with quarterback Norm Van Brocklin, the future Hall of Famer and future head coach in the NFL. Remember, Norm Van Brocklin coached with the Falcons, he coached with the Vikings. And it was there during that time, I think Coach Madden realized his love of football and love for teaching, combining all that together, and that meant being a football coach. So in 1960, he began his coaching career at a small college south of San Luis Obispo called Alan Hancock and then later at San Diego State University under another legendary coach, the guy who could throw it around pretty well, Don Coriel. Throwing his Brady on third down. Over the middle, he's got Tim Brown. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. But we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost start in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. the Hall of Famer Ray Guy to punt this away on fourth down. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. Now they'll throw on first down with Favre. Forced out to his left. Now he's going to let it go deep left side. A leap and he's got it. He got it. And he'll be forced out of bounds all the way down at the 25-yard line. It's a big play that time for the NFC. 67 yards. We see this happen so often. If you're a defender, it's like watching a bad movie over and over. The pressure's good, forcing the quarterback out of the pocket. But it's a lot to ask for these defenders to stay plastered to receivers long enough. And sure enough, they let a man come open, and the connection leads to a big play.
So that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. Dancing to his left. And that's going to be caught. Touchdown, NFC. Debo Samuel, 25 yards for the touchdown. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two. Two touchdowns, Charles. A great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, and not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they've played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. Extra point by Anderson, up and good. And it's now 14 to nothing. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Following the touchdown, here's Anderson to kick it away. Taking it about the one. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. But the AFC making their way out, and it's one of Coach's favorites, another local guy, Tom Brady, who will be at the controls. And boy, Coach always admired the way number 12 could run an offense, and especially his ability to stay calm under pressure. Tom Brady is a guy who's always looking downfield. He never looks at the rush. He hangs in the pocket, and he makes a throw. He's a cool guy. He's a tough guy. Let me tell you, there's no one calmer in the pocket than Tom Brady. And I know that Coach has a great appreciation for Tom Brady. He turned 45 back on August 3rd because Coach coached a guy like him in uh, George Blanda, who played a long time in the NFL. In this game, it features legends and active players. Tom Brady qualifies as both. Now a toss play. Allen tried to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Charles, you know, it was in the early 1960s that a young John Madden made the acquaintance of the owner of the Oakland Raiders, one Al Davis, of course, and the two, they really bonded, would become one of the best owner-coach duos in NFL history. And to take it a step further, Al Davis became someone who John referred to as his best friend. Yeah, 1967, Brandon, Al Davis hired Coach Madden to be a linebacker's coach. Remember, this is still the AFL at that point. We had not merged totally with the NFL. And Coach Madden, he paid dividends almost immediately. Helped the Raiders win the AFL title in 1968. And that meant a date with the Green Bay Packers in what was now known as Super Bowl II. But by 1969, at the age of 32, just 32, Brandon, John Madison, the man of head coach of the Oakland Raiders. And what a ride. He, the Raiders, and the NFL were about to go on. Nearly a huge return, as it is still a very good one. 24 yards. And the NFC is going to have a short field as they take over first and 10. Running right, here's Sanders. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Charles, you talked about John Madden and the Raiders going on a ride. Well, try these numbers on for size. In 10 seasons as a head coach, the Raiders won their division seven times. They finished second the other three times, and he became the youngest coach to amass 100 career regular season victories and is still, to this day, the franchise leader in wins. And when you think about it, that's where that rivalry with Kansas City really took root, as did the expression commitment to excellence. And boy, was it personified by the players who played for Coach Madden. On offense, how about quarterback Kenny Stabler, wide receiver Cliff Branch, wide receiver Fred Bolitnikoff, tight end Dave Casper, to name a few. How about those great linemen he had? Center Jim Otto, guard Gene Upshaw, tackle Art Shell, all of them in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And guys on the defensive side of the ball, the Met. And he is in. Touchdown, NFC. A great effort there with his second touchdown here in this first half as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. A CD, that's his second touchdown already. And how about this offense? Three drives, three touchdowns. An absolute total team effort right now. And let's face it, I don't think he's done. We're still in the first half. There's a lot of time left to go. 
I don't know what they're going to do on the other side trying to slow him down. But right now, he's feeling it. Now to try to add the extra point to Lefty Anderson. And it is now 21 to nothing. The drive there only spanning three plays. And Barry Sanders the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's Anderson to kick it away. Here comes Hall. He's going to bring it out. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. And the AFC offense heading back out. You know, Charles, coach really loved to utilize his tight ends in the passing game. You think about Dave Casper, Hall of Famer for those great Raider teams. And I think he saw a lot of Dave Casper in an all-Madden staple, Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez is the type of tight end I think everyone's looking for. He's the guy that can make some big plays from that tight end position. Let me tell you, you better make sure you have him accounted for on every play. And that's exactly right, because Dave Casper, he could shred defenses down the middle of the field. And that's exactly what Tony Gonzalez did in his entire career, a 14-time Pro Bowl selection. Only Tom Brady has more. There are six guys in the 15,000-yard receiving club. He's the only tight end in there. Tony Gonzalez, every snap, he had to know where he was because he could make plays short, medium, and long and often put the ball in the end zone. Meanwhile, Brady's throw caught by his receiver, Hill. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. Brady's throw there complete. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. Now Brady. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Brady now to throw. And he'll find Hall. Now the AFC going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. One first down, Brady. Well, the NFC pressure a little too much as they get home for the sack. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing on second and long. Brady. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. The sack that time by Michael Strahan. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles. And that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. We've got to start helping this quarterback out because the entire game, he's been under siege. I don't care what the down and distance. They've got to get the ball in his hands a lot quicker. And down he'll go at the 25. Well, coming up in the second half, we'll run through John's post-coaching triumphs. But for now, we present a very special tribute to the man of the hour, narrated by Trey Mosley. What comes to mind when you hear the name Madden? Is it the coach who led the Raiders to their first Super Bowl victory? Perhaps it's the broadcaster who entertained millions of fans. Or maybe it's the video game known simply by his name. But no matter what comes to mind when you hear the name Madden, everyone thinks of one thing. Football. The core of it was football. It's the greatest game in the world. The left goes to the right, the right goes to the left. Madden is on the field. He wants to know if it's real. John Madden comes on the shoulders of his players. In my mind, 
John Madden is the most important figure in the history of professional football. Show me somebody else who did it on three levels the way John did it. There's nobody. Boy, Charles, yeah, that's, that is really well done. Coach was something else, wasn't he? I'm reminded what Al Davis said when he was inducting coach of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Brandon. He loved the game. He loved his team. He loved the Raiders. He loved this league. And you can see it with everything he does. No doubt. But it's quite possible, though, that now he would say, hey, enough of that. Let's play some football in the second half, forthcoming from Oakland. They'll run with Allen. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. Tackle for loss by Lawrence Taylor. So now, Charles, to pick up the story we've been telling, John Madden at 42. He just completed a 10-year stint as the coach of the Raiders. He wants to step away a bit from the grind of coaching, but he doesn't want to step away from the game of football. So he ends up signing on with CBS in 1979 to try his hand at broadcasting. And much like his coaching career, he was pretty much an instant success. Partner, he really connected with the people right from the start, and people may not remember. He wasn't even on the number one team in the beginning. He worked his way up. But the same things that made him a great coach made him a great broadcaster. The ability to show the big picture, yet break it down into the details. That's what he did with his teams. That's what he did with the people. That way, he was simple to understand, yet insightful for viewers. He did with that big personality that he had, one that connected with everyone. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here's Ray Guy now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Ready to begin their next drive here, the NFC offense. Far. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. They've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. So for Coach Madden, Charles, you know, by 1981, his broadcasting career is really taking off. He's elevated to the network's number one booth that calls all the big matchups. And he gets the plum assignment of calling Super Bowl 16. And that is going to be pulled in one-handed. Wow. Touchdown. Randy Moss. 60 yards. As his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. As he was shuffling right out of the pocket. You could just tell he was going to take a shot downfield. He had his eyes down there the whole way. He certainly did. He wasn't taking off to go, right? When he was flush from the pocket, a lot of times you see him, eyes will drop, ball will get tucked, and he takes off, becomes a running back. But as you noted, stayed alive as a passer, tremendous body control, and a pretty good arm there, too. Extra point by Anderson, up and good. And it is 28-0. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it's finished off by an NFC touchdown. Anderson to kick off. Following the touchdown, here's Anderson to kick it away. Seven Bivile, welcome to the Blaze Cage. The offense for the AFC set to go now. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, C.D., and if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? 
Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, let's just say it's been unusual. Over the middle complete. That's Brown. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. As you mentioned, CD, talking about John Madden, the broadcaster, he called eight Super Bowls with Pat Summerall, three more with Al Michaels later in his career. He spent nearly three decades in the booth, all told. And not only was he beloved for his mannerisms, we know that, but he was an innovator as well. Yeah, Brandon, you're talking about things like the Telestrator, which totally became identified with him, and now it's a staple for all analysts to have in the booth. And then you think about things like Turducken on Thanksgiving, when he used words like boom and pow. He helped create the old Madden team. He was a very popular commercial pitch man. And even the Madden Cruiser was unique, and you had to be someone to get a ride on it, too. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. Now, CD, we did get a little ahead of ourselves talking about John Madden, the broadcaster in the 90s and 2000s, because there was another product during that time period that he became quite famous for, and something that you and I know a little bit about, and that's the video game that bears his name. Originally, John Madden Football, when it was first released back in the late 1980s, and now known the world over simply as Madden. And Coach saw this originally as a way to teach the game of football. The early designs were for a seven-on-seven seven game, but he said no chance. He would not sign off on it. He wanted to be as realistic as possible. He told him, call me when it's 11-on-11, 11 11, and he got his wish. Yeah, after that debut, Madden the video game continued to pick up steam through the 90s in a big way, and John himself, many will remember, was a commentator for the series for many years. And now here we are in the 2020s, and this game has sold somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 million copies. On the toss, here's Allen. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. Boy, that's a five-yard loss. Fourth down now. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense is pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame whooping has turned into results. So the AFC with the football as we welcome you back. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. Now Brady got to have this one. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. 142 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. The last run got six, now second and four. Another run here with Sanders. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. So, CD, you look at the accumulation of John Madden's achievements in the world of football, the coaching success, the Super Bowl title, the incredible career as a broadcaster with 12 Emmy Awards, Madden the video game. It was very fitting back in 2006 that John Madden got the call to be enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. A more deserving person you will not find. He gave an incredible speech on that day, Brandon. So many of his former Raider players were in attendance. He talked about how he envisioned that when the last person turns off the lights in the hall every night, that the bus talked football amongst themselves. And what a discussion that might be. Yeah, he finished his speech by saying, today feels like the second time in my life that I'm being carried off on the shoulders of others. Yet instead of off the field, it's into the Hall of Fame. This has been the sweetest ride of them all. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. So it's a win here for the NFC. Just an incredible afternoon of football and remembering the life of John Madden. And before we go, 
one final message. And for all of us at EA Sports, this one's for you, Coach. I just say this, I thank you all very much. This has been the sweetest ride of them all.